Hey everybody, my name is Russ Layton, and yesterday I passed my California real estate brokers exam. It was my first try, but boy, it wasn't exactly what I expected. So I wanted to give you a couple of tips while they're fresh in my mind, and I can remember what was on the test. Here's my proof that I passed. And yeah, when I went to the DRE in Sacramento, uh, one of the, I think, five locations in California, you can take it. We had a line up outside, and uh, you know, I was talking to a couple of the guys that were there, and there were two guys that I ended up talking to in line, and neither one of them had passed. So the, the, other, the first guy was there for a second time uh, to try and take it, and the other guy had already taken it four times. So immediately I was kind of nervous because I was like, oh shoot, these guys, you know, are, are going several times. And I knew it had maybe a 50% pass rate is about what I've heard. And so, um, you know, I've been studying pretty hard. So when I went into the exam room and we finally got uh, settled in, you know, there's 200 questions. You have four hours to take the exam. It's all on the computer. They give you a simple calculator to use, a whiteboard, and I think an eraser. And other than that, you know, you have a little plexiglass around you and it's every other computer. I don't know if that's for COVID or for cheating, but it's a proctored room. So that's kind of the environment of what to expect. If you need to go to the bathroom, you can. You just have to turn in your mouse and you put your thing on pause, although the time is still running, but uh, then you go get your mouse back after you go to the bathroom. So you can take a break if you need to, to have a snack or get some water. Um, I ended up taking the exam in about two hours, so I had two hours left. Um, and when I finished, I did not think I passed because it was tricky. So this is my first tip. Slow down when reading the language and make sure you understand the question before looking at the answers. And the reason I say this is because the language that they use in the exam is very tricky. I didn't expect them to try to trick me, but I'm telling you right now, the language is tricky. So you might know the content. I, I went in there feeling like, okay, I've studied a lot. I know the content of what I should know as a broker. But when you read the questions, you're like, well, hold on a second, let me read that again. I had to read several of the questions three or four times because the wording of them was tricky. So my first tip is slow down when reading the language, make sure you understand the question before looking to the answers. Because once you understand what the question is, your brain will, go, will if you know the answer, your brain should find it right away and say, okay, it should be this. But if you are confused by the question and then you look down to the answer because you just were trying to push through the test, you might get lazy and you know, just try to pick the answer that seems to make the most sense, but you don't actually understand the question yet. So first, understand the question, then move on to the answer choices. It's all four uh, multiple choice, A, B, C, or D options. So there's no E. So it's a one quarter chance that what you, if you have to guess, it's a one quarter chance it's correct. My number two tip is rephrase a question in your own words if possible, so that you make sure you understand. So sometimes I read a question and then I'd be like, okay, what are they asking? Let me rephrase it to myself in a more logical uh, explanation. And then I'd be like, oh, okay, this is what they're asking. Again, I move towards the, towards the answer. Uh, and, and most of the time, once I figure out the question, I knew what the right answer should be. It was a matter of figuring out what was being asked and with the information given, and then finding the logical solution after that. So one and two, they're honestly kind of similar. Um, the next tip is study hard and know your terms. And this is an obvious one, but you know, I went in having made a lot of flashcards and I will tell you the flashcards really helped me because the process of writing it out, seeing the term and flipping it over and then writing out the other, uh, the answer. Um, I went through my flashcards probably five times before the test over, you know, a week ahead of it. And so by the time I got to the test, I knew those concepts really, really well. So study hard, that's an obvious one, but flashcards and writing things out is really solidifies the knowledge in your brain. Because when you write it out, you have to you know, make a conclusion of what that information is. You're not gonna write out word for word, probably the definition of it, you might, but I like to summarize on my flashcards so that it's in my own words. Number four, uh, this is not a tip, it's just uh, anecdotal. But regarding the math questions, I only had three questions that had any math at all. And two of them I needed to use a calculator on. That's not to say that my exam will be the same exam you get, 
but there wasn't a lot of math on there. I think there was one income problem, there was a transfer tax calculation and another tax calculation. Um, again, that could just be my test, but there wasn't a ton of math. So take that for what it is. Number five is understand what's on the test. And by that, I mean, understand the context of it or the content as well um, as content is what I should really say. There's 200 questions. You need a 75% to pass, but realize that it's not a straight 75%. It's weighted. And so they're weighted based on the concepts. I mean, they don't release this information of exactly the breakdown, but just because you get 151 correct, you could actually still fail the exam if you don't pass the most heavily weighted questions because that could throw your numbers off. Um, and when you pass, they don't tell you how much you pass by. So I could have passed by the skin of my teeth, and I probably did, if I'm honest with you, because it was that hard. Um, but know the breakdown, and that's what I'm going to give you next. So this is just according to the DRE's website, and they say this is not a complete list, but this is kind of the general idea. So 15% of the exam is going to be property ownership and land use controls and regulations. Okay, that's all these items. Then you've got laws of agency and fiduciary duties, approximately 17% of the exam. And this, I noticed this one on there a lot. Uh, fiduciary duties, they ask a lot of questions on this topic. Property valuation and financial analysis, that's like appraisal. Um, then you've got financing, about 9% of the exam. And then you've got transfer property, about 8% of the exam. And then you've got, this is kind of a catch-all category, practice of real estate and mandated disclosures. And that's all of these items. You can see it's a big list. So that's the, that's the bulk of it, 25%. And then lastly, you've got contracts. That's about 12%. So, you know, for whatever it was worth, I took the exam on the 23rd in Sacramento. Those are, you know, just my tips of how to pass. And, you know, you just got to study hard. Read it slow, rephrase the questions so you understand it before you actually jump into the answers. And take your time. You know, I'm a fast reader, so I had to force myself to slow down so that I made sure I understood what was being asked on the questions. Uh, but just take your time. You'll have plenty of time. Uh, as far as the format, you know, if you skip a question, you can come back to it. And you can see what, how many uh, questions you've answered and how many you may have to go back to, and there's a little scroll bar on the left-hand side. So you can jump back to question 143, having been at 189, you don't have to hit the back button, you know, however many times just to get back there and then go forward to submit. So you can jump around the exam if you need to, if that's a method that you like to do, leave the hardest ones for last or do the hardest ones first, whatever it is, you know, you can jump around and it'll show you how many answers you've, how many questions you've answered and what ones are left to be answered before you submit. So I hope that helps and good luck.